afternoon, Leslie. How are you? Good, John. How are you doing? Not too bad. Um, understanding there's still uncertainty with Dane's status, um, but what have you seen from Christian and Kyir in a rotational setting um, that would maybe make them prepare this early in their career to potentially each have to play the full game? Yeah, I think in the roles that they played in our first couple of games, John, they've done a really good job of uh, understanding the game plan and then being able to go out and execute it, both in practice and in the games. And that's always a good sign. Uh, and the production that they've given us, uh, the games haven't been too big for them. Uh, so if it comes to that, where they would have to both start, uh, you know, we'd be comfortable with both of them out there for sure. What would potentially change outside of the obvious of being on the field more for each of them if thrust into those individual roles, uh, each playing on the outside? I mean, they've both been playing, so I don't know how much different it would be. Their preparation has been the same, and they've been preparing each week to play. Uh, so I don't know if it will be a whole lot different, uh, just the different people that you're lining up against, the different people that you're preparing for would probably be the biggest difference. Thank you. You will. Hi, Leslie. Um, I'm curious, you know, uh, Kair coming into the season, I mean, in a training camp, expectations were super high, you know, uh, which generally tend to be the case for first round draft picks. How has he handled the role that he has had and how do you expect him to handle if he's thrust into um, that role of playing every snap on Sunday? You know, he's done very, very well within the current role where he and Kristen have basically split the reps uh, throughout the ball game. And so if he's thrust into the role where he's taking all the reps, that would be a little different for both of them, a little bit of an adjustment for both of them, but I, I think they both would uh, do a good job. They're going to do a, a great job in their preparation, and that's the key uh, for Kair as well as for Kristen. And I think they would be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, fair or not, when he was drafted, a lot of people said, you know, he was drafted to cover guys like Tyreek Hill. You know, I know it's not that simple and your defense, your scheme dictates, you know, how you, you know, game plan for teams. But how confident, like, of course you're confident in him, but when, when, when Sunday comes against Tyreek Hill, if he ends up having to cover him, how ready is, is he for that from his growth from when he started to, to now? Well, Matt, you said it. Uh, it's never about one guy in our scheme. I mean, it's it's about a collective effort between our rush and our coverage combined. And there aren't a lot of guys in our league that will stand up and tell you, I'm going to take uh, Tyreek Hill one-on-one. -on -one. I got him all day long. It just doesn't happen very often in our league. Uh, he's an excellent receiver, one of the best in our business. Uh, but for us, on the way we play defense, it's a collective effort uh, between our secondary and our rush and our linebackers. Mm -hmm. And finally, what what clicked for Tua uh, watching the tape the last couple of days against Baltimore on Sunday, last Sunday? He just did a, a great job of reading coverages and, and finding an open guy. And he has the arm strength and the accuracy uh, to make those throws. And he did a terrific job uh, in, in both games, particularly in that uh, second half of, of the Ravens game. Thanks a lot, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, John Warrell here. Sorry, I'm down in my basement and nobody needs to see my basement now. <laughs> um, okay, John. But um, just wondering, we, we discussed this back, I think, in the spring when, when the Bills, you know, bulked up their pass rush. It was, you know, it, it, the chance was to take the pressure off the back end. How important might that be in this game, given that you're facing – you know, Waddell and Tyreek Hill to take some pressure off what could be a depleted secondary? Well, that's an important part of our success on defense and really in a defense, the ability to be able to rush the quarterback uh, with four and not always having to expose the secondary by bringing five or six uh, guys to uh, make him speed up. So it's always important for us to combine rushing coverage, John, and it's no different uh, this week uh, although they have some outstanding young wide receivers and a uh, really good quarterback, uh, but it's the same way every week for us. Uh, we need to combine both rushing coverage in order for us to be successful as a defense. 
with not knowing the status of Ed and now with Jordan kind of nicked up, um, does that kind of deplete what you can do on the defensive front um, or, or, you know, with those guys not there and, and how disruptive they can be, how does that, how might that deplete what you can do with a four man rush? Well, if, if they're not able to play, you know, we have some other guys who get an opportunity similar to last week when Ed was not able to play and Tim Settle wasn't able to get on the field with us. We had some uh, other young guys that stepped in and Brandon Bryan and CJ Brewer, and they did an outstanding job for us and uh, helped us to have success uh, on Monday night. And, It'll give other guys opportunities if for some reason uh, Ed is not able to go or Jordan is not able to go. Uh, that means next man up, somebody else will have an opportunity. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Coach Frazier, Mookie Hawkins, Welfare Sports Cincinnati. How you doing today, sir? I'm, I'm doing good, Mookie. How you doing? Think I think I lost you there. I can't hear you. I can see you now, but I can't hear you. Can you, you got me now, Coach? Got you. Got you. <laughs> yes, yes, sir, man. This defense is looking awesome, man. Nine sacks, five interceptions, only giving up 17 points in two games. So far, so good, right? Um, but you, you you face two different types of offenses, right? And we know cross arounds and quick game is pretty much a normal trend in, uh, in offense, how they use that. But how does the speed of Waddle and Tariq Hill underneath kind of put defenses in binds? Well, you, you're right. I mean, it's a different style of offense than in some ways than the first two we faced. Uh, these guys, they do a great job. To re their receivers with yards after catch. Mm -hmm. So our ability to be able to tackle and get guys running to the football is going to be very, very important. It's not always just bombs away. You know, they're throwing the ball quick, like you mentioned. Uh, making some catches and making people miss. Uh, so it's going to be important that we tackle. Uh, we'll get guys running to the ball and, and, and have success and trying to get the ball taken away from them as well. Yes, sir. And now uh, the good thing about that and your younger guys, you have two young guns in, in Elam and Benford. That's definitely, you know, come up and do some great run support uh, so far. But um, what went into the evaluation process of uh, Benford getting a nod over Elam in recent weeks? Yeah, you know, as we uh, going through it, Mookie, we've just been continually putting them in different positions and just trying to see how they will respond. And, uh, you know, we split the reps with both of them, and they've done a really good job with the reps they've gotten. And we expect that to continue. Uh, but Kristen's done a good job in everything we've asked them to do, but so has Kyrie. They both have done a really terrific job. We just made a decision that one would start and the other would split reps, and they've been splitting throughout. Absolutely, Coach. Keep up the good work. Good luck this Sunday. Thanks, man. I'm up. Yes, good afternoon, Coach Frazier. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. A uh, couple questions for you. Uh, how did the, how did, can you give a little bit on the play CJ and uh, this week's uh, pass game? You know, I, I, I miss your, your question. Uh, can you repeat it for me, George? Oh, yes. Uh, the play of uh, C.J. Brewer and Brandon Bryant. Uh, okay. Could you assess their, their performance in, in the game? Yes. We were really pleased with both uh, guys and the way they performed. Uh, if you can imagine, George, being on a practice squad and really coming to work uh, to prepare for the next opponent, thinking I'm going to just be – working to provide a picture for the offense. And then you get notified that you're going to be playing on Monday night football in front of a national audience uh, after being on the practice squad. And uh, both guys responded very, very well. Uh, did a terrific job on the field for us. They prepared the right way during the week and went out and played at a high level for us in the ball game as well. Yes, and uh, with, with two, with that offense, would you think you may see uh, stop the rush pass first or run uh, with your uh, with the defense this coming week? More work on the uh, on stopping running game. Well, it always starts with us, George, to stop and run. I mean, that's that's our goal in every ball game to try to you know get a team to be one dimensional and it won't change this week either. We want to be able to defend the run game and and and, and limit uh, the, the amount of big plays they get in the passing game. And hopefully, we can do that. 
Uh, but it starts with being able to stop the run and not letting an offense become a balanced offense. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great week. You too. Thanks. Hey, Leslie. Um, I know you already touched on some of the injuries across the defense at corner and D-line in particular, but then when you throw in, you know, Micah High, Matt Milano also leaving, it's really just all across the defense right now. So I was curious how that affects you from the standpoint of, you know, not just in a vacuum of what will we do at this position, but when there's so much uncertainty at once in one week, how does that affect your preparation? It's a good question, Catherine. It, it, it definitely goes through your mind as you're putting together your plan for the opponent, uh, as you're thinking about matchups and, and what you want to try to get accomplished. But at the end of the day, you have to trust uh, the guys that could potentially step into roles if someone is not able to play, uh, that they'll be able to uh, handle the game plan. Uh, and part of it is when we when we start back in April, Catherine, we're, we're installing the same things that we're going to run in the fall. And I always tell our players that unlike some teams that may be installing just to take a look at some things in the off season, we're working on things we're going to do during the season, which I think is one of the reasons we've been able to usually get off to a good start on defense. So the players that are with us, they've had a lot of time on task. And so when they are thrust into the role that a Brandon Bryan or C.J. Brewer were put into, uh, it's not like it's something new when they hear a particular defensive call. They've had a lot of reps at it. Now it's just a matter of going out and executing that assignment. So we're trusting that the guys who would potentially play who haven't been playing will be able to go out and execute their assignment and, and help us win. You had mentioned the other week when talking about Trey White, how, you know, obviously you want guys to be healthy and be able to play, but sometimes there's that clarity of once you at least know you can let the next guy get a little more ready, or even if they've been preparing the whole time, when, again, there's so many different positions being affected right now, does it impact you at all of like, which you find out first when guys are ready of like, if you find out more news on cornerback sooner than safety, does, does the order of that impact you? To a degree, but you, you can't let it uh, freeze you because time goes on and you got to be able to get ready for practice. You got to get ready for this ball game. So you have to make some decisions and uh, you, you can't be held hostage. Otherwise, uh, you get to game time. You really won't have rep some of the things you want to be able to do in the game. So, uh, you, you know, we, we put together a plan. And even if a guy's not able to, pra not able to practice and he's still in limbo, uh, we're trusting that he's spending the time with the tape. Uh, he's spending the time mentally going through the process. And so when there's a decision made about whether he's going to play, and if he is, uh, he's somewhat ready because he's visualized himself being able to be in the game plan. And if for some reason we find out he's not able to play, well, then that other guy who was scheduled to maybe step in in his role, he's been getting those reps all along. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, good to talk to you again. We saw a lot of comebacks this weekend and Miami uh, leading one of them. Why do you think that is? And from a, a defensive coordinator's perspective, when you see a team that you've shut down for mostly three quarters or a half start to get some momentum, how, how do you go about stopping that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there, were, there were some games this past weekend. Uh, one you mentioned uh, the opponent we're playing and some others where teams really put together some strong stretches from an offensive standpoint to come back and, and get a win. Uh, when that happens, when a team starts getting a rhythm, uh, you just, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to slow it down as best you can and you need someone to make a play. Uh, but it's usually a collective effort. You know, it's a balance between what you're doing on defense, what you're doing on special teams, what you're doing on offense. And it, it takes all three to try to slow that opponent down once they get in a rhythm. But it is the National Football League. Uh, it's hard to blow a team out in our league. Uh, the, you know, probably 60, 70% of our games come down to one score. So you have to go into it believing it's going to be a one score game, no matter what the halftime score is. And sometimes even what, uh, by example, what, what's going on in the third quarter. And you have to be prepared to try to finish that game. But uh, sometimes easier said than done. Hey, Leslie, with the addition of Von Miller um, and, and his impact, is Jordan Phillips not getting enough attention for how well he's played through the first two weeks? Well, 
we're giving him some attention. You know, I tell you that uh, he's playing well for sure. Uh, but so is our entire defensive line. I mean, all those guys are doing a great job, but we are not ignoring Jordan. He's doing a terrific job and having an impact uh, in each of our ball games. And he's been that way throughout the offseason and training camp. So we're not surprised by his production and the impact he's had. Uh, but we are not ignoring him. I want you to know that. <laughs> How has your relationship grown? I think when, when he talked about coming back to Buffalo, that, that you guys kind of got off to a rocky start and it was kind of a, some, some tough love there. How has your relationship grown and in, in, in the trust been developed? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like we've always had a good relationship. It's just a, there's a standard we have here in Buffalo. And uh, early on, we just wanted to make sure he understood what that standard was on defense. And, uh, and he acquiesced to how we do things and what we were asking him to do. And so our relationship has been good. And, uh, and he came back. He wanted to come back. And that tells you a lot uh, when he wanted to come back, Shaq wanted to come back. That's that's a good sign when guys want to be in this environment and be a part of what you're doing. So uh, that speaks to the good relationship that we do have. Appreciate it, Leslie. You're welcome. Okay, Leslie, uh, thanks for joining us. Mark Vaughn here. Uh, with the Dolphins' speed, not just at receiver, but at running back and the way they use motion and jet sweeps, could you just uh, uh, comment on how they try to spread you out uh, horizontally, uh, as much as vertically. And then, um, just what did you, what have you thought of your edge setting, uh, through by your defensive ends through two games? Yeah, it's a good observation, Mark. They are one of the teams with the most amount of pre-snap movement, uh, in our league. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of that. That's who they are. That's their offense. And we'll have to be able to adjust to that and handle it. Uh, and, you know, we're going to work that throughout practice. But we've seen that uh, for the last couple of weeks as well, maybe not to the same degree, uh, but that's who their offense is. And, you know, as I mentioned, we'll have to prepare for it. As far as setting the edges, I think our defensive ends have done a great job in doing that, in particular on Monday night where we had to be able to set hard edges to get what we wanted versus the run game. And our guys did that, and which is part of why we were successful in defending the run. So, pleased with the way our ends have set edges and obviously uh, when we've had chances to pass rush uh, they've done a great job there as well thank you You're welcome. hey leslie um i was curious uh obviously we've talked a lot about jaquan johnson and jamar hamlin and how much work they got um with jordan and micah missing time but i was just curious when it comes to micah if there's any update there and just for jaquan when he comes into a game how much confidence do you have in him and you know, I guess, where do you kind of view him now as being able to come in for those guys? Yeah, Elaine, I think uh, Kevin was telling me earlier that Sean's going to address the injury situation in his media uh, session, so I'll lead it up to him. But when it comes to ja Jaquan, uh, we have a lot of confidence in him. He had a good training camp for us. And as you mentioned, uh, both he and DeMar had a lot of reps this all season with the, uh, with the absence of Micah at times and the absence of Jordan during the offseason. Uh, so our confidence has grown in both of them. Uh, Jaquan will be a guy that we don't feel like uh, there's going to be a, a great deal of drop off if he had to play. Uh, he's prepared. He's going to work extremely hard this week in practice and be prepared when his number's called. And uh, be a great opportunity for him if he had to play. And then I was curious, uh, you guys haven't given up a point in the second half yet. Is that like... I don't know. Does that speak to adjustments? Does that speak to just how well this group is playing? What, what I know it's early, but what do you attribute that to that's still impressive through two games? Um, I like the word you use when you say it's early. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the objective, now that's a, a great stat. But the objective is to win the game. So if a team scores a point coming out of the half or scores a point in the fourth quarter, but it doesn't lead to a win for the opponent, I'm all <laughs> I want to walk off the field with a W. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, it's Catherine again. Um, to jump off defense for a second, we've heard so much about Ken Dorsey and his competitive nature from players, coaches, everyone. I was just curious for you, knowing him over the years on this coaching staff, but now in this larger role, how do you see that competitive side of him? Um, like, how does he use that to help this team, but also balance it to you know, be ready for all the different moments a football game can bring. 
yeah, that's one of the things that uh, Kenny brings to that role as coordinator. He's such a competitive guy. And he wants to win every situation. Uh, sounds like you know his background pretty good there, Catherine. But uh, I think our, our, our players seem like they feed off of it. I know when we were in training camp and even when we were competing against one another in OTAs, I could sense the offense uh, really having that same type of intensity that Kenny kind of coaches with. Uh, but yet he is a guy who's able to rein it back when he needs to and, and, and take it in a different direction uh, to encourage players at the same time. Uh, but that competitive nature, uh, that desire to want to win every single situation is there and it comes across. And uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, and, and it really helps to permeate uh, some of the things we're trying to get accomplished, it sounds like, on offense. Is that fun for you, too, then, when, you know, you're going up against that and it, how does that affect you? It's a good question. Uh, it, it affects some of our other coaches more than it affects me, I'll say that. <laughs> you know, uh, there were some times and, and when you get a chance to talk to Kenny, you'll, you'll, you'll reference these, these moments where we were in competitive situations and he'd let us know if, uh, if he thought the defense was being too aggressive or not or whatever, and, uh, which is good. You know, just good back and forth between the offense and the defense. And I think that helped our, our team kind of come together, just having that exchange at times in those competitive periods. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's all we have for today. Thanks, Leslie. All right. Thank you.